to the sound and the torque. And listen to the shift. Notice that we're staying within about a 1,000 RPM. And that shift feels just like a manual transmission. Now we're going to let off. You can see those RSs come right down. It's just a fabulous combination. And this is an 8-speed, guys, not a 10. Today we are in a early model JK with an L86 6.2 liter LT engine. We really haven't been talking too much about the L86 lately, but early on in my videos, most of our LT swaps were L86s, and the reason is supply and demand. The L86 is the truck motor, and back in the day, they were readily available versus the LT1 and a lot less costly. Henceforth, we did most of our early LT swaps with the L86. Of course, we did some L83s, but if you wanted the top of the line, 6.2, then you got the L86. As years went on and the LT1 was produced in vast quantities, the price went down, and the L86 kind of stayed stable. The L86 is not available new, as far as I know, as a production engine. It's only available as a long block, and then you got to build it, where the LT1 is available through GM Performance, and it's a complete, virtually a production engine. It has different manifolds. Overall, the L86 is very similar to the LT1 in performance, and you can listen to this getting on the freeway here. I think we surprised that guy. So there's lots of L86s out there in wrecking yards. Most of our 6.2 LT swaps now are new LT1s. The price of the LT1 has come down to about $8,000, where just a few years ago it was $10,000 plus. The price of a used L86 can go from four to $6,000 for just the engine. And if you find a really smoking deal in an L86, be careful. We've seen guys get burned out there buying them from private parties at good prices and they were flood vehicles or had a rod knock or something. So try to buy from a reputable wrecking yard and you're gonna probably pay in the four to $6,000 range based on some things like year and mileage. Try to stay with a 17 or newer L86. We find that GM has made some improvements to both the hardware and the software in the 17 and up engines. If you get an earlier one, it's not the end of the world. They're still good motors. Uh, they had some updates for the active fuel management and of course a bunch of software updates for the early engines. So be aware of that. I can see the market forces for these GM engines changing. Recently we did a couple of LS3 swaps. Actually we're doing a couple of LS3 swaps and the engines that we got no longer have flex plates. They have a different oil pan. They're not coming with exhaust manifolds any longer. And I asked my GM reps why, and they said, the LS3 has been moved to another production line to make room for new vehicle production engines. And the cost has gone up a couple of hundred dollars, and they're supplying less and less components on the engine. So that tells me that the days are probably numbered for the earlier LS engines. And at the same time, the LT1 has just dropped in price. So where does that put the L86? Well, the L86 is basically the truck version of the LT1, just like the L94 is the truck version of the LS3. That means there's a lot of them out there. The L86 has been equipped with the six speed, eight speed, and 10 speed. Most of the six speeds were early on. Most of the eight speeds were mid-year, and a lot of them are coming with the 10 speed now. And it's a phenomenal combination, just like the LT1. And the fact is we're using mostly new LT1s in the shop now because they're available. When they weren't available, we went with a used engine. Engines that are in current production have advantages, not only for the cost of the engine, but parts supply. GM has made millions of LS engines, so parts are gonna be readily available for many years to come. And as GM steps up production on these LT engines, they're basically gonna take over the Gen 4s, just like the Gen 4s took over the Gen 3s, and the Gen 3s took over the, the old small blocks. The engine has tremendous torque, especially on the bottom end, and guys say that this engine has more torque than the LT1. I don't know, I've run them both, we've swapped intakes, both of the engines run excellent. I really don't prefer one over the other as far as that goes. These engines run cool. I'm not really sure what GM did to the cooling systems on these LTs, but these 6.2 LTs tend to run cooler than the LSs and the Hemis. And just overall, the performance and the drivability of the 6.2 LT, whether it's an L86 or an LT1, is simply unsurpassed. You're pushing power similar to about a 500 horsepower crate motor, 
I know they're rated at 430 to 460, but when you factor the torque in at low RPM, we find that these engines can run with a higher horsepower motors, yet still idle at four or 500 RPM. The negative on the LED6 is it is a large engine. With the direct injection, the valve covers are taller, and it has a really tall intake, a big intake on it. And the LED6 intake is bigger than the LED3, and the LED3 is bigger than the LT1. So fitting it in an early JK like this can be tight. Now this guy is running the LED6 intake on this early JK, and while it's tight, it it fits and everything clears. You just gotta be careful with your clearances. You gotta make sure that you've got clearance to the firewall. Another option is to go to the LT1 intake. The LT1 intake bolts right onto the LED6, and it's really not that costly, and then it looks cool. You can run the Corvette valve covers or Camaro valve covers. The LED6 ran a mechanical vacuum pump driven off the crankshaft by a belt for brakes. I really like the setup. The reason I like the setup is, as long as that engine is turning, you've got vacuum, you've got brakes. It's not like a smaller displacement engine where you rev it up, the vacuum drops off, you gotta have a booster pump, a vacuum booster pump, or you lose your brake assist. This has always got brake assist as long as that engine is running. The downside to the vacuum pump is, it's on the driver lower, right where the steering gear is, and it fits just fine with a stock steering gear. But if you were to run, say, an XD box from PSC, then you're probably gonna to wanna to eliminate the vacuum pump. And there is no proper vacuum port in the intake. I'm not a big fan of removing the purge valve and using that or drilling a hole in the intake. I don't like doing that. If you want to eliminate it, and we've done this several times, you can run a vacuum pump, an electric vacuum pump, similar to what the Pentstar does. And the aftermarket has a lot of good, high quality pumps out there. The LT1 does not run the vacuum pump. They run vacuum off the intake. So if you swap the intake out, then you don't have to worry about the vacuum pump. But you will have to seal it off. You have to plug off the, the cavity in the block where the vacuum pump mounted. The LED6 has a dual stage oil pump. It also has active fuel management. So this is a four and an eight cylinder. This is not dynamic fuel management where it can go two, three, four, five, six, whatever cylinders they want. This is either a four or an eight. In a light JK like this, I actually think that, um, active fuel management will do this customer some good. It can be a little bit annoying, the sound of the exhaust and the slight vibration, so some customers choose not to run it. But I know that with the LTs, the active fuel management stays in the four-cylinder mode longer than it does with the LSs, and I think that's because the higher compression and the full control of the cam, meaning the CVVT, and we'll talk about that in a second, means that we can put out the higher cylinder pressures and keep it in the four-cylinder range. Because when you're a four-cylinder in a big, heavy truck, you don't have the torque to keep it in that four cylinder mode unless you're under a really light load. So under the medium loads, the LTs I find will stay in the four cylinder mode and you can feel that cam moving and the high compression comes into play. So continuous variable valve timing allows that cam to be phased wherever you want. So that means if I'm just cruising down the highway like I am right now and I start going up a grade and there's a increased load, it might just phase that cam, advance it, get a little bit of burst of bottom end and leave the transmission alone. That's a lot less invasive than downshifting the transmission and revving the motor up. So not only is it more economical, but it's more pleasant to drive because you don't have that downshift. Now my recommendation, and I get this all the time, do I get the eight speed or the 10 speed? Well, I think we can all agree that the 6L80 is a great transmission and it's a great transmission for the Gen 4. As long as you have the eight and the 10 speed available to you, I would definitely go with that with an LT if you have the option. The 8L90, as the 90 indicates, is a heavy-duty transmission. It can handle in excess of 700 foot-pounds of torque. We put them behind the LT4s and they've had no issue. Uh, the 10L80 also comes behind the supercharged engines and we've had no issue. However, the 10L80 is a lighter-duty transmission. It's still a very strong transmission. And guys, I drive these things all day long and my guys drive them and some guys prefer the 10-speed and some guys prefer the 8-speed. And it really kind of depends on what you're looking for. The 10-speed seems to be slightly more docile because it's got more gears that keeps the revs a little bit lower. When you do get on it, the 10-speed shifts more and keeps the RPM in a little bit tighter of an RPM band. The 8090, on the other hand, has slightly longer legs and it will let the engine rev a little bit more. So it's kind of a toss-up. Again, I think it comes down to, are you looking for a little more refinement or a little more strength? So that's my take. If you get an LED6, try to get the 8 or the 10-speed, you'll be happy. Other than that, you can pretty much consider the LED6 the twin to the LT1. 
the performance, the drivability, the sound, they're all going to be very similar. You can pick up an L86 in the used market for less money than a used LT1, but you're not that far behind a new Crate LT1. Uh, yeah, it's going to be cost you a few thousand dollars more, but you're getting a new Crate LT1. At the end of the day, you get it in your Jeep and you drive it, you really won't notice any difference. As much as I like the LT 6.2s, for my purpose, I think I would go with an LT 5.3 for my personal Jeep, because one, my wife drives it, and when she had the 6.2 LS, she used to chirp the tires all the time, so she ended up with a 5.3 LS. And two, the 5.3 will do what I need it to do at a lower cost. It'll haul my JK with, now I've got 37s on my JK, on the highway with no issues, with a 10 speed, guys. With the 5.3, the 8 speed is an excellent, choice but I think the 10 speed gives it a slight edge having those extra gears with a smaller displacement engine the feedback I've been getting from the guys with the 5.3 10 speeds is is always very positive with uh, with fuel economy yeah it, it's not gonna burn the barn down as far as horsepower goes but it's powerful enough the uh, 5.3 LT is gonna probably perform right up there with a 5.7 Hemi VVT a 6 liter LS it's no slouch but at the same time it has the excellent drivability of the uh, of the 6.2 LTs and it, it can use the 8 and 10 speed transmission. The 5.3 can run on regular gas and it has a little bit lower compression than the 6.2s so that's an advantage if you want to run the lower grade fuels. But no matter which LT you choose I don't think you're going to be disappointed. The 6.2 LT is a perfect match for a heavy JK. You got a JK with skid plates, rock rails, 40 inch tires, 1 tons, the LT 6.2 will just eat it up. It'll just, it'll pull that JK like a go-kart. What you want to try to avoid is putting a smaller displacement underpowered engine in that heavy JK and make it work hard. Because then you're going to be less efficient, get less economy, you're just not going to be happy driving it. If you put a 6.2 LT in a heavy JK, it's like putting a 5.3 LT in a stock JK. It, both of them probably have more power than they need but they're both fun to drive, and you're never underpowered. You're never struggling on the highway or trying to pass or going up a grade. We've taken several of these Wrecking Yard L86s and we've put LT1 intakes on them, LT1 exhaust, and essentially turned them into LT1s, and if you open the hood, you're not gonna be able to tell the difference, or it would be difficult to tell the difference. So they're easily customizable, just like an LT1. So we're gonna take this one to the mountain, and we will see you shortly.